What's up, guys? Welcome back to me and to you. It's been a little while for both of us for me to just kind of chill in front of the webcam here. I'm chilling here with Zevia grape soda. This is great. Love this stuff. Uh, Zevia. If you don't know about Stevia as a sweetener, you should. It'll maybe help you kick soda. I mean, this is so much better for you than diet soda. That's kind of my point, and that's one of the reasons I'm drinking it. But I find it refreshing, and I need a little something to keep my throat lubricated while I talk. Anyway... Zevia. If you end up trying some or grabbing some, let me know. I think it's good. I wouldn't promote it unless I thought it was healthy. <laughs> anyway, this video is really about the V-Core 98 Plus and the V-Core 100 Plus. So I had a lot of time with those rackets and I just kind of wanted to break down my experience and my impressions of those rackets for you guys. I feel like my recent content has been a little bit niche and I suppose this one is as well because I'm talking about extended length rackets here. So, you know, maybe you're a little shy to dip your toes in the waters of longer rackets, and I understand. The selection isn't great, but there are some good rackets out there, but I guess all in all, a lot of them are a little harder to use, so I understand that. And I'm just looking at the swing weights here, right? So this is the uh, racket finder tool where I can uh, pull up rackets and compare the specs side by side like this, so this is really nice. Right here, I got the 98 next to the 98 plus so that we can do some comparisons here. And I'm gonna do more in-depth comparisons between the two actually, which get really interesting uh, on this tab, but more on that in a second, so stay tuned. Um, and the V-Core 100 versus the V-Core 100 Plus, because they are more different than just the length. Initially, I didn't think so. I know I have some content earlier that's kind of saying whatever applies to this extended length racket translates basically to the impressions of the standard length, but that's not quite true. It's more than just that, and I didn't realize until I looked at this tool let me talk about this real quick. So the V-Core 98 Plus and the V-Core 100 Plus, I would say that the main difference, they swing slightly differently. And on paper, you can kind of see that despite the swing weight being virtually the same between the 98 Plus and the 100 Plus, it's one point, whether or not you're going to feel that, it's hard to say, but the head sizes are different. So they kind of feel a little different. And the balance point is a little bit different. It's three points headlight versus five points headlight. So how is it that the rackets have almost the same swing weight, but this much of a balance difference. It's this uh, difference in weight. One is 11.4 ounces, one is 11.2 ounces, uh, or 323 grams versus 318 grams. So they're just gonna swing a little bit differently. And you know, there's a lot of generic things people are gonna say, like the bigger head means more stability and more power. And it's like, you know, I guess there is some of that there, but the beam is also thicker on the uh, 100 plus, right? Yeah, it is, you can see that here. It's like a one to two-ish millimeter difference depending on where you are comparing it. So yeah, roughly a two millimeter difference in various places of the racket. So thicker beam on the 100 plus, which is also slightly lighter, but, but it's balanced in such a way to kind of compensate for that. So it swings similarly to the 98. What else is maybe meaningful to say about these two rackets? The 98 plus I would say is definitely a little bit more comfortable I didn't have any issues generating spin with it though. Honestly, I had enough time with these rackets, I couldn't necessarily tell that I was able to get more spin with one over the other. Although I definitely felt a difference in stability. The 98 Plus did definitely feel less stable than the 100 Plus. And uh, I might end up saying the 98 instead of 98 Plus when I'm talking about the uh, 100 and the 98 Plus, but I'm mostly just talking about those two rackets anyway, so try to follow me, I guess. But yeah, the 98 Plus less stable more comfortable and a bit less power. Maybe a little bit more control because it has less power. And I would also say better feel. Like maybe a little bit better connectivity to the ball, but also just a legitimately slightly more comfortable racket. And I think that has something to do with the beam thickness. So you see here that the frame stiffness is 66 on all these rackets, but definitely, I mean, the 98 plus has to have a more flexible hoop because the beam is thinner. And that's the kind of stuff you have to kind of be able to like, you know, on paper, you can look at some specs, you know, if the racket says it weighs this much, it obviously weighs that much. But when it says what the frame stiffness is, like how is that actually going to translate? Because two frames that are 66 in flex rating, they're going to feel really different. One might feel so much more stiff than the other. And it's like, how is that? You know, sometimes it's a weight thing because one just doesn't plow through the ball as much. So it might feel stiffer. Another reason could be that the hoop on one is actually a lot stiffer. And so the racket head doesn't really give as much to the force uh, of, I guess, compression. It would be when the strings 
are making contact with a ball with a lot of force, you know, because the strings are obviously constantly pulling tension on the head of the racket and the strings and the head of the racket are in like an equilibrium of tension, right? And when the ball hits the string bed, the strings pull on the racket and the ra racket head pulls back and that kind of creates that that power that you feel in the racket. So when the beam is thinner, it's going to deform a little bit more on contact and I think that is one of the reasons why the 98 feels a little bit more comfortable than the 100, the 98 plus versus the 100 plus. So there's a lot of reasons, you know, beam thickness can be one and the beam shape is pretty much the sh uh, same on these two rackets, but uh, you know, beam size and beam width is not the only thing you have to consider. You have to consider the beam shape as well. Box beams are going to flex more typically than like a round beam, whatever they call it. You know how the Babolat Pieros and stuff have kind of like an aerodynamic oval shape. They almost look like an airplane wing or something. Those are very, uh, I don't know, structurally rigid. Like they're not really designed to flex very much. Those Babolat heads do not flex very much. And that's why they're kind of known to be arm unfriendly. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, that's a bit of my quick comparison of the two rackets, the 98 plus and the 100 plus, it was really hard for me to decide which racket I actually liked better. I had both rackets for a good couple of months side by side, but I have a lot of history with the V Core 98. That's a racket I had for almost, I think like eight months or something, maybe a year. And I ultimately sold it in this whole, you know, palette cleansing thing I did, selling off all my rackets and then kind of finding my racket again. So I have a lot more time with the 98, but the time I had with the 100 was alongside the 98. So the comparison of those two rackets is good. And I could have used either racket, but I preferred how the 98 felt. But there were moments where I appreciated the V-Core 100 because of its stability and maybe slightly more easy power. So just, just slightly. But I never felt like the 98 didn't give me enough. And I never felt like the 100 plus gave me too much. I never felt like the 100 plus didn't feel good. I just noticed that the feel and connectivity to the ball was a little bit more comfortable and, and I don't know, pleasing on the 98. And as far as the stability goes, it's just kind of like I can go either way, I guess, you know? I think a good player can go either way. I think the V-Core 100 probably makes certain things a little easier, but, you know, there's something to be said about a racket that just has like a lower twist weight. So speaking of that... You know, like I think it slices really differently, for example, and that might be something you prefer depending on how you slice. But let's talk about twist rate real quick because that is a spec that is not generally listed. And this is where that racket comparison tool comes into play and things get interesting, all right? So look at the VCore 98 Plus here, all right? This is where the difference really is. So the twist weight on the 98 Plus is 13.9, but it's 14.4 on the regular 98, all right? That's a pretty big difference. They have a difference here of 4%. <laughs> Maybe that makes it not sound so much, but, uh, you know, the difference in length of it being only half an inch longer is a difference of 2%. But a lot of people will say that half an inch is way too long. So, I mean, 2%, if you're going to say 2% is nothing, but you're going to say half an inch is too long, then you're already contradicting yourself. So 4% difference in twist weight. And I will let you decide how important that is. But that my whole point is that this 98 plus is not just a V-Core 98 extended. It is a V-Core 98 that is a lighter version and extended. And specifically, I can't say exactly, but definitely the weight in the head, there's less weight in the head, like around the three and the nine area, because that is where the twist rate really comes from. I imagine the whole head is actually a little bit lighter, just in various areas around the whole head. I don't know exactly how they achieved it. It's possible that the V-Core 98 and the 98 Plus are manufactured the same way, but the standard 98 has weight added, and then they just didn't add weight to the V-Core 98. It's hard to say, because sometimes they they also add like another layup of material, which makes the racket feel a little bit stiffer, but it also adds weight. It's just hard to say because they're not giving you a spec specifically for what the hoop flex is. So if they gave a hoop flex rating, like if that kind of thing existed, maybe you could have a little more insight onto how the 98 plus might feel differently to the standard 98, but you know, they just don't really list something like that, but they have the twist weight. So you can, you know, derive whatever you can from that so that's just a fun fact the 98 plus is not the same as the the it's not just a 98 extended and that's basically the case for all these plus length rackets you see the babolat pure aero plus is not the same as the pure aero and same for the pure drive same for the e-zone 98 plus and 100 plus 
uh, and for the vCore 100 and 100 plus. So here I just switched over to the vCore 100 tab using this comparison tool again from uh, Tennis Warehouse. It's so cool that they have a database that measures twist weight. I really appreciate that. I, I wish that they just listed it though on their uh, on their specs. Actually, I feel like twist weight is a is a measurement that needs to be more popularized because twist weight will tell you just as much as like racket flex will tell you you know and it's like racket flex doesn't tell you everything obviously because different rackets feel differently in terms of stiffness and comfort despite having the same rating so you know it's not perfect but it's useful and so i think the twist weight rating is also useful especially when it comes to things like stability and stuff and and there is a there is such a thing as too much stability like you know i don't want to get into that too much here but my point is again a three percent difference in twist weight from the vcore 100 plus to the vCore 100. So again, to compare, that is a 3% difference between these two, but between the vCore 100 plus and the vCore 98 plus, uh, let's see, 13.9 for the vCore 98 plus and 14.7, all right, versus 14.4 and 15.2. I'm just kind of getting a rough idea what the difference is between the two standard length twist weight options. But anyway, yeah, the vCore 100 Plus, which has a lower twist weight than the vCore 100, still has a higher twist weight than the vCore 98 standard. So technically it should be even more stable than the vCore 98 would be, even though it's lighter in the head. Anyway, those are just some fun facts and a little bit of, uh, I don't know, niche insight into extended length rackets. I am a huge advocate of extended length rackets, partly because I like a longer handle. Those Wilson racket handles are so short. It's like they just want everyone to be a one-handed player. It's kind of ridiculous. And yeah, I think adding half an inch isn't that big of a deal, you know, in terms of what you need to do to get used to it. It's just time, you know, it just takes time to get used to that. And the whole idea that like it's too long is just ridiculous because when is a racket too short, you know? People talk about all the benefits of maneuverability when you compare a 27 to a 27 and a half inch racket. So it's like, okay, why don't you take all those benefits further and reduce your racket length another half inch? Why don't you play with like a junior racket? And then they're immediately like, oh, no, no, that's too short. You're not going to have any reach. And it's like, okay, well, why doesn't all that stuff apply that you're saying that is bad about the shorter racket to the extended length racket? Like maybe your 27 is too short, maybe 27.5 is how I feel about how you feel about the 27. You know what I mean? So it's just stigma. A lot of people are just regurgitating a bunch of stigma. A lot of people just regurgitate a bunch of marketing. You really just got to play for yourself and think for yourself and try to connect yourself to your tennis. And, you know, take what people say with a grain of salt because a lot of people don't know what they're saying or what they're talking about. And a lot of people, even if they do, they don't really know what's going to be best for you, you know? And sometimes what is best for you might not even be what you're most curious about trying. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, like, sometimes we just try rackets because they're fun or interesting. So, I mean, like, for whatever reason you do or don't maybe want to try an extended length racket, that's fine. That's all I'm here to tell you, really. But if you're curious about how those two rackets compare. That's my insight. The 98 is a little more comfortable, but less stable, less power, and the V-Core, more power, more stable, a little less comfortable. Is there anything else that I can think of that really should be mentioned between the two rackets? It's nice, now that, now that I've boiled everything down and gave you all the context underneath these two rackets, I can kind of just say really simple stuff, and you guys understand exactly what I mean now that I've explained it. So, yeah, the 100 plus feels a little different, but you know, I think a racket that has as low of a twist weight as the VCore 98 does, I mean, that's like, it has the twist weight of a racket that's kind of like scraping the surface of uh, probably a 95. Let's let's take a look real quick, actually. The v, let's compare the VCore 98 Plus to the VCore 95. You see how here how sometimes they don't have the year and sometimes they do? It's like, okay, here's the VCore 95, and then here's the VCore 98, 95 2018. Was the first time they made the VCore 95, uh, I mean, what year was that? Was it 2018 or was it the year before that or after that? Like, what year is that? You know? And they have all these V-Core 100s. It's like, okay, this one is the 2021. What what year is this? I don't understand. Maybe they only made it for two generations, so I should know that or something. But I also feel like they should just put the year there anyway. It would simplify things. So V-Core 95, um, 
I think this is the newer one. Yeah, the twist weight on the VQ-185 is a little bit lower than it is on the 98 plus. And I guess that checks out, but you can see here how close of a difference that is. It, uh, the VQ-198 is closer in twist weight to the 95 than it is to the 98 standard length. Kind of an interesting way of looking at it. So, I mean, if anyone's going to say that the VQ-198 isn't stable enough, but they think the VQ-195 is stable enough, then you can just look at this spec right here. The twist weight on the VQ-198 plus is higher than it is on the VQ-195. So, these metrics are really useful and it can kind of put into perspective how much truth or weight or value there is to all these things that people just say. They just say these things. And even if they're right, you know, you should still try for yourself and see how much it matters for you because sometimes a racket that is rated at 64 will feel much less comfortable than a racket that is rated at like 67. I have seen it happen. So, you know, you got to take these numbers with a grain of salt too. I think the ones that you can kind of take more seriously are things like length because length is length that just is what it is and same with weight okay balance also the same but that number tends to vary a little bit just because of quality control so even if it says it has this balance and that weight it might be a little bit off and you know might not feel quite like the way that you expected but yeah yeah all right well i think i've said what i needed to say i'm going to finish my drink i'm going to put more ice in here the ice already melted that's kind of lame i should have put more ice in it in the first place but you know it's all good. I will mention two things real quick. If you guys want to support me, you can follow my YouTube channel, obviously. Subscribe to it, like this video. Let me uh, know what you think in the comments as well. I'm just curious what people have to say after watching a video like this and you know, being informed on all this uh, little stuff that I think most channels don't really talk about. Like, I don't really see anyone talk about these things you know, and go and do like a twist weight comparison. Like, What do you guys think? Because I know there's some people that like to nerd out, but I don't see these conversations happen very much. Um, so hopefully you guys appreciate that and are intrigued by it. And I'm also going to mention my clothing brand. The Instagram is isn't.co, I-Z-N-T dot C-O. You can see this shirt here. It says uh, it's an hourglass, a not equal sign, and a dollar sign. So this actually stands for time isn't money. And the whole concept is that time is priceless. And the world has kind of conditioned us to believe and think about time as money, as if they are one and the same, but they are not. You never get your time back. And, you know... We just shouldn't live like time is money because it's not true. It's actually a lie. It's a way of thinking, and I, and I understand why people think that way. But I also think that it's unfortunate that we have been kind of fed a way to express that our time has value. And one way in which most people express that their time has value is by saying that time is money, you know? But time is so much more than money. I would go as far as to say that time is so valuable that to equate it with money is actually devaluing your time. And that is not to say that time isn't, you know, that, that money isn't a useful tool, obviously, but it's just like, don't put it on the same level as time. You know what I mean? Like money's up here, time's up here. You know what I mean? They're, they're not the same. But if you literally think that they are the same, I think that's just, I don't know, that's not the way that I want to inspire the world to live and to think. I want people to live and think uh, in the framework that time isn't money, you know? If you hate your job, but you justify it because time is money, that's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about, you know? Don't just spend your, your time doing things you hate because time is money. Like, there's more to time than just money. So that's the whole point. And the older you get, the less time you have. You can always get your money back. You can't get your time back, all right? So that's what this symbol's about. This is a design, but this centerpiece is the logo. And I have dampeners that I made and designed myself as well. It's a pretty intelligent design, if I may say so myself. It's a hexagon shape. So it's less likely to roll if it does ever fall out of your racket. Um, and it's also tapered, so it's kind of skinny around the corners, like so it's less likely to get hit, but it also shaves off weight. So, I mean, the weight has been minimized. The, the opportunity for it to get hit has been minimized. And if it does fall out, which, you know, it might eventually, um, it's less likely to roll. So that is the isn't dampener. It's white and black on one side, black and white on the other side should match with anything. It'll look real nice on some rackets, but I think it'll look real nice on all rackets. And just this, this little hexagon shape is nice, you know? It's not a circle, it's not a square, it's not some weird oval with a hole in it. It's a, it's a nice little hexagon shape, and I'm very, I find it very satisfying just the way in which, uh, you know, it sits in a racket and stuff. But obviously I have my own bias because I designed it to be exactly what I wanted a dampener to be. So if you guys want to grab one, I don't have too many left. I'm probably just going to do it for like maybe $7 shipped in the U.S. for two of them. That's a pretty good deal. 
Um, and you can DM me on my Instagram, either at Time for Tennis or on my clothing brand Instagram, isn't.co. And we can figure it out from there. All right. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now. One last thing. Before I go, I got to give Courtside Tennis a shout out because they've been very nice to me with the demos and all that. And they're just a great family owned shop. And one thing I've been thinking about recently is why not give your business to a family owned shop as opposed to the huge, huge big box names. And you know who I'm talking about, you know? So, I mean, if you're going to end up paying the same amount for a racket or whatever, you know, products that you buy, it's you know, it's kind of just meaningful in a way to support like a local tennis shop that is legitimately family owned and run. But, you know, on a personal level, these guys have worked with me quite a lot recently and they've been very good to me. So I'm just happy to shout them out. And yeah, courtsidetennis.com. If you guys want to check out their rackets, they got a nice website. And yeah, you can just poke around on there. And if you're ever interested in getting something, go ahead and grab one. You can give them a call. Let them know that time for tennis. Shouted courtside tennis out free shipping over fifty dollars so you know that's a very competitive offer free two-day shipping all right i'll leave it at that and i will see you guys in the next one thank you